This is the story out in the wilderness I wouldn't forget. It's a day of summoning a big mountain with amazing lakes, but that's not the reason why it was memorable. There's a few smaller, more unusual things. And I will see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, for Mount Square Top. Starting off before the day even started, in the middle of night, I heard a couple people show up at the trailhead, sneak into the bush, and... <laughs> This is the story of Square Top Mountain. I'll be doing this hike back to back with another the previous day. I was up at Mount Beardstat yesterday, my first 14er. Today's just like a bonus hike. We're gonna see if we can get this one. So I'm getting an early start today. I think it's what, 7.30? It goes down here and over there and kind of up there. Yesterday going up Mount Beardstad, I got baked like a baby cabbage, so the ugly sun hat's gonna be coming on here pretty quick as soon as the sun comes out. We just got a visit from Maya. Very happy dog. Definitely feeling pretty slow today. I'm just tired from going up uh, Beardstat. You can see right there behind me. This one I think is about 2,000 feet of gain. Over this edge, I'm pretty sure this hike is about to go straight up. You might say it's windy. I'm gonna just put it out into the universe here. When David gets to the summit, the wind will go away so he can fly his drone. Probably the windiest hike I've done on this entire road trip. back here and you can see maybe the guy over there uh, he's going to the square top lake uh, if you take the path I'm taking up here this goes to the summit remember folks hills pay the bills just look how steep this thing is it's like so when I hiked Mount Ida in Rocky Mountain National Park I was hiking with a nice girl named Emily and she asked me what is there a song that you play in your head when you really need to push up a mountain and I couldn't really think of it and now Looking up at this peak, what's coming to mind is that song from Short Circuit 2, when he's got to save the day. It's uh, it's by Bonnie something. I, I think it's called, I think it's just called I Need a Hero. <laughs> I need a hero. <laughs> I need a hero. at the parking lot told me this was steep and then kind of chuckled <laughs> it was really steep there's no switchbacks it's straight up the rest of this just goes straight up it's crazy this is barbaric hills pay the bills right 
That guy wasn't kidding, this is really steep. So this gentleman down here who's 68, cranking up here, he uh, just waved to me. He's gotta go back down because his shoes are uh, broken. <laughs> I think they just broke, his right shoe broke. He was like flapping it, I think the, the whole uh, sole came off. Starting to get lightheaded, so I'm just hanging out by this cliff right now. So, final summit push three hours for me to get up there from the trailhead. There's two marmots playing tag. The summit block feels a lot like the summit block of Albert Edward, one of the highest peaks on Vancouver Island. A little more grassy though, but steepness, same kind of trail, just straight up. I'll link that video up at the end. That's a pretty iconic one. It's uh, got a big, kind of like this, like big shark fin that sticks up. A lot of people hike that, backpack it. I'm gonna pup here. Feet. No fall summits. Sure hope not. My tank is empty. In the past week and a half, I've done eight or nine hikes, 12 or 13,000 feet of climbing, 40 miles. Wow, there's a thundercloud over there. My heart just sank a little bit. Try to get my shots quick within five minutes and then run away from that storm cloud. Try to get off the summit block before it comes here because it's uh, kind of well, dangerous. <laughs> Woo! It's exhausting. Oh, feels good. Feels good. This one's a real butt kicker, it's straight up the mountain. Totally happy I did this, I am exhausted though. This rain cloud is moving slowly towards me, which is good, which is why I haven't bailed up here real quickly. I was gonna just stay 10 minutes, but uh, everyone else has left. I do need to get away from this rain cloud, so time to go. You look very closely at rain clouds and obviously feel the wind. You can see them move. 
They're gonna be here in probably half an hour. I got a little bit greedy with my shots, I always do that. I'm gonna put this away and I'm actually gonna run over there. Storm cloud's still chasing me. It's not raining yet. Gotta get off this before it rains. The uh, first storm cloud, it split as soon as it hit that peak behind me and it, the black kind of started to turn white. So I've dodged the first one. I gotta hurry here and see if I can get down this real steep part and then see what the second storm cloud turns into because there's about three or four of them stacked back there. So that was the first rain cloud that was right behind me and you can see it's already pushed forward. These things move so fast, it's kind of bonkers. You can see the uh, doom wall of cloud. It looks friendly there, let me tell you. That's big black cloud. Oh, it's moving so fast. Yeah, time to go. We've got a short burst here. I think I can get down this entire thing in about six minutes. So this is definitely some spicy enchiladas going down here. So steep. Almost certain like 80-90% chance of getting dumped on by rain and hail. It looks like, I don't know, it's like 40 or 50% chance now. This is the only time ever that I've been hiking that I've seen massive storm clouds just dissipate to nothing. While I got lucky, it could have been very bad. Being the highest point running across the top of a ridge in a thunderstorm is not a good place to be. And perhaps I should execute a bit more caution in the future. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode. Be sure to subscribe. Uh, if you want to support me, you can share the videos on Facebook. I greatly appreciate that. If you want to support me further, I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash davidhiking. And until the next episode, have a good one.